All right, today's game we're going to talk about made me feel like a child again. Ratchet and Clank Adventures? I don't think that's what it's really called, but I think I'm just going to call it Adventures because it feels like an adventure. This 10-hour game is just... Ugh. I'm a working adult, and as a working adult, I go to a job that's not YouTube or Twitch or anything like that. It's a regular, boring 9 to 5 job. 40 hours a week, 5 days a week. <laughs> I don't have time to be worrying about metas and getting good and being the top of the leaderboard and just and just the rat race of some of these MMO games is just it's just a bit much for me. Sometimes I just want to sit down and just shoot things and just not worry about the adventure that we're going on and just living in the moment of this adventure. And Ratchet and Clank gave that to me. It's this unique game where I was sitting down with my daughter on the couch and just handing her the controller every so often so that she could just shoot things along with me. And we were having a ton of fun with this. Ratchet and Clank Adventures is about Ratchet and Clank. You don't say. First, Ratchet. Ratchet wants to be a Galactic Ranger. A Galactic Ranger is like the superhero of this galaxy where they stop evil and they are seen as the heroes of this world. Well, Ratchet wants to be one of them, and initially, when we start the game, he is turned down until we meet our lovable sidekick, Clank. Clank is a robot. This adorable little robot. He was originally a defect from... a defective robot from Doctor Nefarious, which we'll get into in a little bit. Clank is this robot who really just wants to save the world along with Ratchet, joining up with him and becoming a Galactic Ranger along with him. He is our handy little sidekick, he holds out our guns, he is our jetpack, he is our hang glider, he is very, very useful in this game. And then we have Dr. Nefarious. Dr. Nefarious is the mad scientist of this world. He is the one who wants to see everything explode. Worlds colliding, <laughs> just general tyranny. He is, he's all here for that. Um, and well, he's the one that we have to defeat. Ratchet and Clank is not told through the perspective of Ratchet, even though it is Ratchet you play as, it is told through Captain Quark, the original Super Galaxy Ranger. And as we play the game, we do learn that Captain Quark, he is one of those egotistical heroes. Captain Quark, he is the narrator of this story. He is the one telling the story out in the prison that he's currently in and he explains the adventure of Ratchet and Clank and how they became the best thing for the galaxy. And that's pretty much it for the story. The story is very, very cool, and it's very simple to follow. It's not a... There's not many twists and turns and giant thrillers, even though there is, like, a massive thing that happens in the story. No spoiler alert, we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really fun game. It's a game that even my daughter could follow along with it. And she's like, he is a bad guy. And I love my daughter. It was a great bonding time experiencing this game with her. Having her give me the controller every time she was stuck with some of the harder, di harder, more difficult enemies in the game. Talking about enemies, there's not a lot of variety between all the enemies. We have our general alien type enemies where they're they have all the same guns that we do they're generally super annoying even on the most normal difficulty but on the normal difficulty the enemy types are not that difficult you might die here or there but it's not like something where you'd just be hard stuck trying to defeat this one enemy for like hours and like trying to figure out the best way to defeat them it's very much just a run and gun action adventure where you just take your gun out mow everything down in your sight and there's only one boss in this game that you do experience at the very end 
So for the majority of this game, you're just experiencing probably some of the same enemy types throughout your adventure. And that's not a bad thing. Okay. But the enemy types, we have our alien type and we have our mech type. The mechs are a part of Dr. Nefarious Army, and these aliens are also a part of an organization that is run by a mega billionaire. Because of course, the, the math scientist obviously has to get funding from somewhere, so why not just an evil corporation? All of these enemies are just in it for the money. Well, not really so much the robots. That is just their protocol to just destroy everything in their sight. So don't feel too bad destroying the things that come your way. Um, and talking about destroying, oh, we have guns, lots and lots of guns. And even playing through the whole game, you will not unlock all the guns. You will have to explore and probably play this game through the challenge mode, which is like new game plus. For this game, where you keep all your stats and you replay the game again, but with everything that you had in your last save. Oh, the guns that you get to play with. Super cool. We have guns like the Groovatron. Oh, this gun shoots out a, a, a disco ball that forces every enemy to just stop what they're doing and just start dancing. And it works on even some of the most biggest bosses. It's kind of funny to see a ship stop moving in midair and start dancing in front of you. Like, oh, we have something like the Pixelator, where the Pixelator sh is like a shotgun that turns your enemies into pixels so they can only turn in two directions. <laughs> or even something like Dr. Zergon. Zircon? The Zircons, the little robot allies that you have that come out and just like shoot everything in their way. They have super funny voice lines and they just like, they're just here for the destruction. They're bored if they're not shooting things. Uh, so, so funny. So leveling up in this game is not so much for Ratchet or Clank themselves. We do get like abilities like Graviton boots or glide boots or jetpacks or hang gliders, but all that stuff is like your guns where you'll eventually find them through the game. Your skill tree is tied not with yourself, but with the guns that you are using. So there's three ways to level up your guns. The first way is through the shop system. The shop system is pretty cool. As you mow down your enemies, they will drop metal shards or um, raritanium. Raritanium is used at the shop to level up your guns. It's kind of easy to get depending on if you level up like one gun at one time. Um, I think the rocket launcher is probably the best gun for this because as you're shooting things down, a lot more things will drop raritanium along the way. Use your raritanium to upgrade your guns for better mag better better ammo, longer range, more durability, stuff like that. Um, and then the second way to do it, the first way is your proper skill tree way. The second way you do it is by actually using the gun. So if you're if you're using a gun a lot, it'll level up five times. Each time you defeat an enemy, it'll gain some XP, it'll level up five times. The fifth time it levels up, um, each level is just more damage that the gun can do. But the fifth time it levels up, it changes the actual look of the gun and it gives it a special ability um where let's say something like the rocket launcher it's in the skill tree it gives it homing missile but once you level it up it explodes on impact and destroys everything in its way so cool um the only thing that doesn't level up will be something like the Sheepinator or the Groovatron because they don't do any damage, but every gun that does damage can be leveled up in the first way. I mean, in the second way. And then the third way to level up. As you're defeating enemies, the third thing that they'll drop is either the Metal Shards, which is like just the normal currency, the Raritanium, and then card packs. The Raritanium and card packs can also be found throughout the worlds that you're experiencing, so you can find them by just exploring a little bit they'll be behind some hidden rooms or just located in random areas but if you defeat enemies they can also drop as well and the card packs are really cool because it acts as like the gallery for the game where you can see the different um characters that you've met along the way the different guns that you have 
different upgrades that you generally have and as you complete sets for the card pack it'll give ratchet or the guns themselves better like range better um ammo more damage stuff like that it's it's very interesting how they did it let's talk about the actual world itself so this is an action adventure this is not a open world game where it's just one continuous game where you can just play and go back and explore and re-explore it's broken up into worlds so you have 12 different worlds that you can explore and honestly I do f this is my only gripe with the game is that the worlds are not more mm, the worlds are not so unique that they're memorable where they feel kind of the same and each world is so tiny that going from point A to point B will only take you like 15 20 minutes Completing each world will only take you 15-20 minutes. Completing the whole game will only take you about 10 hours. So, goes to show how much there is to do in this game. Which isn't a bad thing. I'm not... Sometimes you just want to play a game and just get through it. And this is one of those games. I just feel like some of the worlds are not unique enough. Where we have like lava worlds and snow worlds. But you don't have anything like the ice world. You need to have like special things to go in the ice world the lava world you don't need like special suit to go into that world it's just generally all the same but i do appreciate that it has a nice progressive progression system so if you go to a world and you need like a jetpack the game will give you a jetpack if you go to a world and you need like a gravity boot the game will give you a gravity boot it's just the downside is you can't take it along with you so the jetpack can only be used in like two worlds. The gravity boots can only be used in one world. The gli the grind boot that allows you to grind on rails will only be used in like three worlds. It's it's different on where you go. I kind of wish that there was more stuff to do in each world. Though the game isn't one for lack of giving you context for what this world is. So if you're in a world, let's say the lava world, you'll have creatures that are lava creatures along with like the regular alien creatures and the and the robot army that's coming to destroy you will also have like different creatures for each world. This game is very, very pretty and just playing it and having such a really nice graphical experience along with everything else to experience in this game. It just feels like a cake with just a bunch of icing on top. And it feels good. It just feels good to play this game. And I didn't realize it at first, but this game wasn't made by Insomniac Games. And Insomniac Games, I don't know what's going over, going on over at Insomniac, but y'all need to just keep doing what you're doing. This game is available on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. It's also available through PlayStation Plus. There's not much else to say. This game was great. This game feels really good to play. My daughter enjoyed it. I enjoyed it myself. This game is also only $19. So if you do want to own the whole game, that's another way to do it. If you don't want to do this subscription model. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Um, that's it for me. Thank you guys for being here. Um, hit the subscribe button so you know when I drop a new video my Twitch and all my other information is in my doobly-doo. Hit the, li hit the like button so YouTube knows to like, you know, promote my stuff and I'll see you guys in the next video. Which we will be completing Shadow of the Colossus. Stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.